Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real piece of the jury. Today, we will, we will be discussing with them that Morocco should have launched a military response in response to the unprecedented attacks in Smara. But she needs a girl without the affirmative side. Before we dive into this complex issue, know that the attacks on Smara occurred late on Saturday night, the 28th of October. Four explosions struck in three neighborhoods in Smara, including the industrial district, resulting in the loss of one life and two injuries. Two of them are critically wounded. Four military forces suggest that Iranian chemical drugs caused the attacks on Smara in the buffer zone in the desert, claimed by the Palestinian Front, which is a separatist movement in the Moroccan controlled Western Sahara. From the 1973, the Palestinian Front has clashed with Morocco over the Western Sahara sovereignty, igniting a 15 years war. A law erected by Morocco in the 1980s spans 2,700 kilometers, dividing the Moroccan controlled part of Western Sahara from the Palestinian territory. Over the years, the scope of this agreement has evolved, reducing bilateral cooperation. A skirmish with Moroccan forces at the Gulbarak border crossing, uh, which connects Mauritania and the Moroccan controlled Western Sahara. In November 2020, the Palestinian Front literally ended the ceasefire agreement overseen by the United Nations for over 30 years. Moroccan forces and Palestinian forces have exchanged fire from them. You might have to ask what are the compelling reasons for Morocco to launch a military operation in response to the attack in Smara. Well, at first, the obligation to protect civilians is both a moral and practical necessity. The attacks pose an immediate threat to Florida's innocent civilians, justifying a military response under the responsibility to protect, or to be possible. Then, by the United Nations in 2005, moreover, formal military intervention as a part of national security is crucial. The attacks not only threaten lives, but also affects Morocco's territorial integrity and stability. Diplomacy alone may not fall into place. Fighting an adversary that demonstrated an uh, intense bombardment as supported by his force. Briefly, Morocco can no longer rely on peace for means, but address for the serious attack. A military response is imperative to protect civilians, uphold national security, and preserve territorial integrity. This proactive stance serves as a decisive leverage to maintain the cherished peace in our world. In response to the unprecedented attacks in Smyrna, Morocco's decisive military action goes beyond protecting its civilians. It addresses a broader regional security concern. Aligning with the United Nations mandate, Morocco justifies its military response and signals a commitment stability. Failing to act risks further attacks and undermines collective efforts against terrorism. In a nutshell, this military response is crucial to prevent future Palestinian attacks and send a strong signal against terrorism. Ensure lasting regional stability and demonstrate that such actions are not tolerated. Thank you. Good afternoon, judges, my worthy opponents and members of the audience. Thank you for taking the time to attend this debate. I am Malek from the Opposition House, and today I feel highly privileged to radiate forth my views against the motion which is, should Morocco have launched military operation in response to the unprecedented attacks in Smara? Welcome. My team and I will be trying to convince you that uh, we'll be trying to convince you uh, on how Morocco should not have launched any military operation in response to those attacks. 
we will, I promise, that we will provide you with very great and convincing arguments to convince you all along this debate that this is the right procedure to carry. Mrs. Prime Minister Mercer talked about diplomacy. While you might say that violence, as I call it in this case, should be responded by violence itself in order to establish equality and justice, it's important to remember that prioritizing diplomatic and negotiation efforts provides opportunities for resolving conflicts through dialogue, compromise, and peaceful means. Talking about dialogues, engaging in dialogues um, may address the root causes of the problem and lead to a more sustainable solution. You also have to consider that diplomacy, uh, that diplomacy uh, addresses, uh, addresses to, sorry. You also have to consider that diplomacy provides an avenue to address grievances, resolve disputes, and uh, prevent any kind of escal escalation of problem which could lead to wider regional or even international tensions. These measures include temporary agreements, ceasefires, and other ways to build trust and, uh, to build trust and reduce tensions. Let me add that the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutters affirmed the Moroccan autonomy plan and their con contributions to resolve the conflict. The Polisario, all along with their Algerian pat patrons, su uh, have suffered a series of diplomatic setbacks which uh, most likely compelled them to escalate. As the King Mohammed VI said in his, one of his speeches, Morocco is not negotiating over, over its Sahara. The Moroccan is if the Sahara never was and never will be in the negotiating table. table. Rather, we are negotiating to reach a peaceful uh, resolution to this regional artificial dispute. Um, well, you might, were you willing to remind me that we lost a precious life during those attacks? Let me tell you that in the somber wake of one single life lost, emotions run high and the impulse for, and the impulse for immediate action can be overwhelming. However, in, in the midst of our sorrow, we must pause and reflect on the, on the profound consequences that impact the fabric of our humanity. Yeah, uh, the weight of one, one single life lost is immeasurable, yet the history teaches us that the echoes of such actions uh, extend far beyond from the initial tragedy. Launching military operations in the heat of grief risks the spread of violence uh, causing scars for generations and generations. I personally believe that the loss of one single life does not, does not justify endangering the lives of many others. Uh, uh, it is a call to cultivate understanding where conflicts are resolved with, through peaceful means, honoring the dignity of every individual. Thank you. As we engage in this debate, I want to express my appreciation for the opposing team's efforts. Constructive dialogue is essential for the development of ideas. However, I, feel, I find myself compelled to respectfully challenge certain assertions made by the opposite team. It's not to fight with them, but to really understand the topic better. So let's get into it. First off, let's talk about our right to protect ourselves. According to the UN Charter, there is, a, there is the thing called Article 51 that says we have the right to protect ourselves if you are in danger. And guess what? We are in danger. Our borders are being messed with and we need to do something about it. Now, let's not forget the strength we have as a nation. We got, we got a pretty strong military force with a big arsenal, tanks, helicopters and drones. 
and the big number of soldiers that is 575,000 soldiers. So when someone threatens our land, a military operation is like showing them that we mean business. We need to send for the Moroccan Sahara and all the people who call it home. Think about the people who came before us. They give everything, their time, love, and even their time, and even their life to protect our land. Today, the torture of responsibility has been lead to us. Now, it's our turn to carry on that legacy. We've tried talking, negotiating, and being nice, but the, re the recent attacks so show that some folks are interested in peace. You I? Yes. How can you explain the consequences on the economic, social, and tourist areas if Morocco sends military attacks in response to what happened in Smart? As an answer for your POI, I would advise you to be more attentive in the next intervention. Thank you. We're not saying we want to go for a war, but we have to be real. When someone keeps messing with us, we can't just sit back and hope they will change their minds. A military operation is like saying, enough is enough. We want peace, but we won't let anyone mess with our country. Who told you that Morocco wants to react? Who told you that Morocco isn't just waiting for the perfect moment to pass into action? After all, one person was killed, and three are, in the, are in injured, including two in a serious condition. Isn't that enough and concerning to pass into action? Imagine if we don't do anything. Our effort for peace could be wasted, and more attacks might happen. We're not weak for choosing military response. We're strong and smart because we're standing with trust and logic. Let's also think about our future. If you let this attack slide, what kind of Morocco will live into our kids and grandkids? It's not, it's not just about us, it's about the generation to come. A military operation is a way to provide a safe and peaceful Morocco for our children. So, in a nutshell, we are standing here today, not because we love war, but because we love our country. We are saying, hey, we have tried talking, and it is not working. Now it is time to protect what is ours. It is a fair decision, yes, but it is one we make with essential responsibility for our nation. Just face the reality. There isn't another way to face this problem. We have tried being nice, discussing and negotiating, but, the, but it's not, it didn't work. The only thing to do is the military operation as a response. This was all, and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, honored judges, esteemed audience, thank you for joining us today for this critical and thought-provoking debate. We find ourselves in a hypothetical scenario when Morocco is faced with unprecedented attacks in Samara. The question that lies at the heart of our discussion is this. Should Morocco launch military operation in response to these attacks? Firstly, if Morocco launch military operation in response to these attacks, it will declare war. A war means significant consequences affecting not only the parties directly involved, but also the broader region. Here are some potential consequences. The regional destabilization. The conflict could lead to increase the regional instability, affecting neighboring countries and, and potentially triggering a wider regional crisis. International condemnation. The international community, including the United Nations and other, and other organizations, would likely condemn the outbreak of war, calling for an, for an, uh, for an immediate ceasefire and a return to diplomatic solutions. The economic consequences. Armed conflicts can have serious economic re repercussions, not only for the countries directly involved, but also for neighboring states. Disrupted trade, damaged infrastructure, and increased defense, spending can lead to, a, to an economic slowdown. The diplomatic isolation. Wig in war could lead to diplomatic isolation for the parties involved. The international community could impose sanctions further isolating the parties to conflict. The escalation risk. There is always a risk that all kinds of the conflict will escalate, attracting other regional or global actors, and transforming a regional dispute into a better international crisis. The environmental consequences. War often results in environmental damage, including destruction of, infra of infrastructure, pollution, and the potential use of hazardous materials. Yes? 
How can we talk about Pemex when we know that the Polisario Front has launched a lot of attacks and refuses to stop until the Western Sahara is declared as its? I will answer it later. Uh, this can have long-term consequences for ecosystems and public health. Rare is seeking to promote peaceful dialogue and finding a negotiated solution to the underlying problems are essential to avoid these serious consequences. International mechanisms for mediation, diplomacy and conflict resolution remain necessarily essential tools for resolving conflicts like that between Morocco and the Polisario Front in Western Sahara. Secondly, let's talk about the members of Polisario. We have the Secretary General, Ibrahim Ghali, the leader, Sahara members, the armed forces, Sahara refugees, sympathizers, and supporters. As you can see, the audience, the members of the Polisario are mainly Sahrawis. So now we can understand the military responses to his children and the court what Hassan T said at the 21st anniversary of the Green Marsh. The day of the Paris in Morocco is open to all the seated Moroccans and, and Nebis of equal parts, and the whole land is forgiven and merciful. Which shows that Morocco has always been a diplomatic country that tried to resolve all its problems with democracy, and it means that Morocco should not respond naturally to the unprecedented acts of war. Thank you. Dear audience, as my teammates have already announced, this is not a small problem that will be resolved within a snap of the fingers. We are talking about real people who after the night of 28 October live every day without knowing if they will live 24 hours. They close their eyes at night and pray to open them next day. They care about their children. Too bad, there is a revolution among teachers. They care about what they are going to eat. Too bad. The rise in prices keeps increasing. It is already too much for human beings. But it has pushed the limits. Even in their own houses, there is no longer 100% reliability. That's why the bare minimum is to make them feel good and confident in their home. And like said Omar Hiran, the representative of Morocco in the United Nations, the attack on the civilian neighborhoods of Smara is a terrorist act on the website 24 Medias. <clears throat> but then, what should we do? One day, someone said to me that there will never be winners in a war. Everyone is ultimately a loser. But to, in response to the attacks, we simply have to make them understand that we are a strong country by showing them our strengths, so that instead of coming against us, they come with us. Morocco must show Polisario that the Sahara has no need to return to what it was, since it will be better if they join us and give their ideas without reaching someone and running away. When we reach the limits, it is normal to react, but let's act first. For instance, when we were still in primary school, after the terror and the disturbance in class, you were immediately sent to the principal office. Consequences of our actions have never gone unpunished. And that is exactly what should happen if a discussion between Polisario and Morocco doesn't bear fruit. The mistake is human, but we also learn from our mistakes. If it repeats itself again and again, you without ever stopping. You are. Yes? You mentioned that there are no losers in a war, so you should be able to answer this question. Okay. How, can you just, how can you say that one precious life has to justify the endangering the lives of countless others? I will respond to that later because we, I didn't finish. The mistake is human, but we also learn from our mistakes. If it repeats itself again and again without ever stopping because you're under the influence of your friends, you will certainly not go unpunished, otherwise it will be a jungle and life won't stay safe and secure. Here, Polisario is under the influence of Algeria. So it is more than the time to change. Besides, we have certainly not forgotten the jet ski accident on the, on the Algerian border. 
the lives of two young adults were snatched in a fraction of a second. Isn't it the time to say stop? Isn't it the time to start defending ourselves? Isn't it the time to end definitely these murders of innocent people? It is the time. Parents are now have to be prepared for our response. Us, Moroccans, won't stay silent. We won't hesitate to protect ourselves. After all, we get what we saw. Thank you. to answer the Prime Minister first. Uh, I don't think that launching military uh, responses would protect civilians. But in the opposite, it will put innocent civilians in danger, in danger once a war is started between the two parties. As for the deputy Prime Minister, do you prefer sacrificing the life of one person or thousands of people? I think the answer is already evident. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed judges and respected audience, good morning. Before all else, as we know, Morocco is a country that prioritizes peaceful relations with its neighbors and does not resort to war, as the leader of opposition already mentioned. And this Morocco's inclination towards peaceful and diplomatic means in handling regional disputes is evident in, on its reliance on international institutions such as the UN and the MINURSO to address conflicts. There is one most worthy illustration of this approach is the Green March, where Morocco opted for a peaceful resolution instead of resorting to armed confrontation. Well, I think that we all know the cause behind the small attacks by the Polisario is to initiate a conflict aimed at gaining control of the Sahara Desert. In this intricate game of power, the Polisario's uh, actions may be seen as a calculated move to, uh, to provoke conflict, creating a pretext for intervention and establishing a foothold on a region that has far-reaching implications. Let me shed some light on this. This will also answer the POI asked by the Prime Minister. Well, you see, Morocco prefers to resort to international bodies such as the UN to, in, to resolve its disputes. One significant example is res resolution number 2703, dated the 30th of October 2023, which not only adopted a political and non-armed resolution for the 46-year-old conflict between Morocco and the Polisario, but also extended the mandate of the MIRSO till October the 31st, 2024, and this extension is crucial in maintaining stability and peace in the region. However, a point on that, please. Yes? Uh, please, I want to inform you that I'm unable to comprehend the matter uh, that in hand that a new response by military will have a contract future treat in civilians' life. And I would appreciate further clarification, please. Okay, you're going to understand more if you listen for what I'm going to say. Well, as, as I said before, uh, this extension will, will uh, maintain stability and peace in the region, but the, the Polisario Front, seeking to advance its agenda, will launch secure so military... Uh, yes. Uh, how can we not care about one life lost? What if the Polisario launches other attacks and causes more loss of civilians? Well, to answer you, Morocco avenges its victims through raids, drones, attacks, and fighter jets without facing objections from the UN and international community without seeking attention. I think this is an accurate response. Well, as I said, uh, they launch, uh, the police only launch military attacks just before the expiry of the mandate. J their intention is to create a narrative that portrays the Sahara region as a conflict zone, a war zone, putting pressure on the UN and the Minerso to reconsider their position. That's why the police only military provocations lead to the risk of war. But Morocco's decision not to respond militarily to these attacks reflects a strategic and principled commitment to 
to peaceful conflict resolution, even in the face of military provocations, which means that peaceful solutions are more effective in the long run than military responses. And it is imperative, dear audience, to, re to remain cognizant of the fact that the Polisario's assault in Samara are orchestrated with the intention of instigating hostilities with Morocco, primarily to contest control over the Sahara Desert. Thank you. Thank you. Precious and beloved audience, while diplomatic efforts and peaceful negotiations are indeed valuable, there are some other counter arguments to why Morocco should have launched military operation in response to the attacks in Smara. Firstly, the severity and nature of the attacks may be seen as necessitating a stronger and more immediate response is to ensure the safety of civilians and protect national security. Diplomacy in some situations may be perceived as a prolonged process and a swift military intervention could be deemed essential to address an imminent threat effectively. Secondly, if there is evidence suggesting a direct link between the Polisario Front and terrorism, a military response might be considered a proactive measure to contract potential future threats and protect the region from any destabilization. While diplomatic efforts and solutions are ideal, the urgency and severity of the, of the situation may compel Morocco to prioritize more assertive actions to safeguard its interests and maintain stability in the affected areas. POI, please. Yeah, of course. Is this minor incursion by the Polisario enough to prompt Morocco to engage in a direct and armed conflict with our real enemy, Algeria, leading to severe consequences and <laughs> catastrophic human losses? I demand an answer, please. I can see all to eye on you around that, but, but I will surely answer you later. Morocco currently has the argument and the right to protect the safety of civilians living in those areas from any terrorist attacks, which reminds us of the armed forces cleansing campaign at the Gugat uh, crossing after the separatist militaries obstructed, obstructed traffic, which resulted in the explosion of the mercenaries and the push of the sand wall for several kilometers, so that the region has enjoyed security and safety since that time. POI, please. Yes. How can you assess the risk of a new crisis escalation following a military intervention? Sorry, but you haven't been attentive. I've already answered that. In other words, in November 2020, the Polisario Front considered the ceasefire signed in Morocco in 1991st broken and the greatest state of war in response to an action by Moroccan military units acting to unblock the free movement of people and goods through the Gugarat crossing. The Sahara's board borders with Mauritania after 14 days of interruption by a small group of activists. The eviction of the activists was carried out without any damage to any of those who were causing a huge traffic jam and great losses to the transporters who were stopped for almost two weeks. It's a damage, isn't it? Your case rests on the assumption that engaging in peaceful dialogue might offer an opportunity to resolve underlying issues and prevent an escalation of tensions. Dear opponents, dear opponents right? However, we said that a military response might be considered a proactive measure to contract potential future treats and protect the region from any destabilization in the shortest duration possible. So sorry, but your argument is irrelevant. The ministry underlined that Morocco had no other choice but to assume its responsibilities in order to put an end to the state of obstruction resulting from these movements and re-establish freedom and civil, and civil and commercial movements. So as this house grappled with these complexities, it is evident that the path forward requires a careful weighting of strategic, humanitarian and diplomatic dimensions to chart a course and a military response that best serves the interests of both peace and stability. Thank you for being attentive. Uh, 
Uh, dear audience, dear opposite team, thanks for attending this debate. So, the Moroccan Sahara Desert Conflict was first created in 1975 by some Marxist regimes in the region like Libya and Algeria, as well as Cuba. Spain withdrew from the Moroccan Sahara after the Green March. All of a sudden, a separatist group claimed independence of the country. It was engaged in a guerrilla war against Morocco until a ceasefire was broke by the United Nations in 1991. Um, uh, since then, the region stayed calm. There were some issues every now and then, but nothing as serious as the recent attacks on Samara. Some say Morocco should have launched retaliation attacks against the Polisario Front, and some argue Morocco should, uh, should uh, keep its patience until things are more uh, uh, clear. Uh, I'm for the second opinion for various reasons. First, Morocco has signed a ceasefire treaty in 1991 with the Polisario Front, which the United Nations broke. In my opinion, any military attack on the Polisario Front will be a breach. Yes, please. Yes, the Green March played a major role in the independence of Morocco. But do you think that we have the real independence? I'll answer it later. Mm -hmm. uh, first, Morocco signed a ceasefire treaty in 1991 with the Polisario Front, which the United Nations broke. In my opinion, any military attack would be a breach uh, of that ceasefire. Uh, we all know Polisario uh, guerrilla has started to assault our territories, uh, but we need to be uh, but we need to be patient until things uh, became more transparent. Uh, once we have the evidence that the Polisario is behind the attacks, Morocco will know how and when to respond. Second. European countries will not allow another war to occur on their doorsteps. They are concerned it might break the. They are concerned it might break their efforts in the fight against terrorism in the Sahara region, uh, and uh, their daily, and their daily uh, handling of masses of immigrants uh, embarking on their tours. Second, uh, third. Uh, Morocco has always sought a peaceful resolution uh, to the Moroccan Sahara problem. Morocco has suggested an autonomy plan, uh, gaining international support from the most powerful countries. Morocco, our country, has always invited uh, our neighbors, Algeria and Mauritania. Yes, please. Uh, please, I would like to know, uh, you said uh, a ceasefire was uh, signed in uh, 1991, but as uh, the PM said, uh, Front Polisario ended it. Can you please repeat? Is this true? I'll answer it later. Okay. Uh, so, Morocco has always sought a peaceful resolution to the Moroccan Sahara problem. Uh, but uh, our, countries, uh, our country uh, has always um, invited our neighbors, Algeria and Mauritania, to discuss this issue. But it's, it looks like uh, the other parties are happy to keep one in Morocco's shoes uh, to halt their regional leadership. Thank you. stated, respect the military, not only oppose national security, but also put them into terrorist activities. It is to protect its citizens. It addresses a broader national security council. Aligning with the United Nations term, we look at justifies its response and signals to commitment to national stability. Stability. 
and that's your best actions are not tolerated. Thank you. Here I am again. Here I am again. Let me recapitulate my point. Morocco throughout his history has generally emphasized the importance of reaching peaceful conflict resolution in its, uh, in its diplomatic approach. While the country has engaged in military operation when deemed necessary for its security, um, diplomatic efforts are all the time pursued to, to address underlying issues and seek negotiated efforts to resolve the conflicts. Um, to sum up, in the face of tragedy, let us not be blinded by grief, but instead let our collective humanity guide us towards a path of healing. For in choosing um, uh, re restraint over aggression, we not only honor the one precious soul we lost, but we honor the potential of a future where legacy of peace over overrules, prevails over the scars of war. Thank you. As a deputy prime minister, in my last intervention, I would like to add an argument. Using a strong military response can be a good way to prevent future attacks and keep the peace in the region. When we show that we want to tolerate aggressive actions, it can make others think twice before starting in trouble. This is really important in, national, in international relations, especially when dealing with arguments over borders and security issues. And as an answer for your POI, I would like to tell you, if Morocco doesn't respond to uh, by military, uh, by military uh, operation, more, uh, more damage will be caused in future. Uh, in future. So the more, attacks, the more attacks are, the more, are econ the more it touches our ec economic. Thank you. The principal recourse to peaceful solutions by Morocco contributes to preserving economic growth, tourist, and commercial of the country. It is for this main reason that Morocco should not respond voluntarily to the unprecedented attacks in Smara. To support this perspective, let's talk about the preservation of the tourism sector. The tourism sector is often sensitive, sector is often sensitive to the political instability and conflict. By choosing peaceful solutions, Morocco can seek to protect its tourism industry with social banks, significant international and external. Maintaining trade relations. Mutual tensions uh, can also affect trade relations by prioritizing the policy. Morocco can help to maintain strong commercial ties with other Western nations, which is crucial for its economic growth. Positive international image. A peaceful approach can help maintain a positive international image for Morocco. This can enhance the confidence of tourism partners and foreign investors that are promoting Dear audience, it is easy to talk, but not. Dear audience, it is easy to talk, but not to do. We are a democratic country, it is true. But we are also a country of justice. We can't anymore risk the life of innocent citizens. I think being against this idea is being against the fact that we can say no. Isn't it a little hy hypocrite to say that? I'm pretty sure you always fight with your brothers. You say stop, and now you can't? Answer these questions and let's see. For Arabs, we say no. For the, the big injustice, we say stop. For the life, we react. Thank you. I'd like to answer for the deputy uh, prime minister's POI 
uh, actually to gain that desired independence we want, we shouldn't respond militarily, and that's what I explained if you paid attention. By the way, we're still waiting for the answer of the panel I asked by the leader of opposition. Anyways, dear prisoners, Morocco's strategic and uh, decision to opt for a non-military approach is a deliberate choice aimed at preserving Morocco's image on the international stage as a responsible and peace-seeking nation. Responding with restraint underscores the country's commitment to diplomatic solutions conveying the idea or the image that Morocco prioritizes stability, regional cooperation, and adherence to international norms. And sending military responses to the smaller attacks could potentially contribute to the projection of an image of heightened tension and conflict, which may adversely impact Morocco's standing in the global community. In summary, the decision by Morocco to withhold... Thank you. Dear jury, dear opponents, I want you all to imagine that you're sitting comfortably in your couch. The night was a special kind of blackness. The night that went only to hold the stars and help them all the brighter. Or simply a night where all the lightning and surroundings make one feel content and happy. But all of a sudden, an attack took place in your neighborhood. How would you react? In other words, how would you react if someone threw just a brick through your lunch window? What would you and your family do if this happened again? So today, and as this house deputy prime minister had already said, we are standing here not because we love war, but because we love our country. Indeed, we teach our children class, we teach our children in history class of all the good deeds our nation has done. Yet, we leave all the, the atrocities against our citizens. So to avoid any further and any more uh, uh, attacks in the next few weeks, no, weeks, uh, years and months, Morocco should have launched military operation in response to the, to the attacks in Smara. Thank you for being attentive. First, to respond to uh, our uh, uh, opposite member, uh, so um, what if um, it's true? Uh, it's well, it's true uh, that uh, it's sad, but what uh, if uh, this uh, this uh, happened to all our uh, um, members of uh, family? Thank you. So, uh, dear audience, uh, there's never a winner in a war. Uh, everybody's a loser in a war. We've recently seen examples in Ukraine and Gaza, and that proves it. Morocco has launched a mass project in its uh, Sahara region to develop its southern provinces. Uh, it finally understood it should not keep its arms crossed waiting for a solution that might come or might not. We have to engage the Sahara uh, for uh, our sol uh, we have to uh, engage the Sahara region into the revolution. Morocco is now undergoing uh, regarding its infrastructure, economy, and democracy.